Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to bring you our next guest today. Krista and I had the most magical meeting, and it just kept crossing paths and stories aligned, and so many amazing things kept happening to bring us together to have this amazing conversation and highlight the story of her overcoming what stress did to her physical body caused her to be paralyzed. And she overcame that journey by recognizing the root cause of why do so many single moms stress out and overwork and burn out. It reminds me so much of my mom's stroke story. Everybody needed something from me. So she just stroked out for a few months, went paralyzed, couldn't talk, couldn't walk. And it really changed all of our lives. So when Krista was sharing her story over tea, it really moved me and I asked her, are you sharing this story with people? And she said, not, not publicly, not on a podcast. I'm like, well, girl, get on our podcast. So it was truly the divine that brought us together from a random Instagram DM, like, Hey, can I buy some Oracle wholesale? <laughs> and that led to conversations that, wow, you're an Aquarius like Chris. Wow. You have a cat named noodle. And I have a cat named noodles. Like just, Oh, you're a hairdresser too. Who does yoga? Like what the hell? Like it was just so freaking magical. I, that I just had to bring her here on the show. So Krista, freaking thank you for showing up and thank being you. a part of the journey. <laughs> thank it's you. so beautiful. You. Yeah, it's so beautiful to have witnessed your story in person. And that's exactly why we wanted to bring you on and just share a little backstory. You know, sometimes it's like, hey, it's our friend, but people don't know like how, like how did you, how did you become friends? And I think that's an important piece of the story because you know, they say when the student is ready, the teacher appears and every one of us has a message for each other. And Absolutely. if we just open up to that, it would, you would realize that that next piece of your journey or that next inspiration and that next bit of service and purpose in your life is literally one freaking chai latte away. <laughs> so Isn't that the truth? Show, it's so, <laughs> it's so cool. So we're excited to showcase your story and I'd love to just start with, you know, who are you, where'd you come from and how did you get to where you are today? I mean, no big deal. Just wrap up your whole life yeah. story. <laughs> In a short little blip, right? <laughs> yeah. You got this. <laughs> yeah. It's magical, right? And I just have, you know, I do want to give thanks and gratitude because actually the first time we met was at Chelsea's Commune and Bloom. Oh, and yeah. um, you were at, you were there. It was for Alondra's um, unveiling of her company, and that was actually the first time I got to meet you. And then I, as life went on and life got busy, and um, my friend Jen and I decided to start hosting cacao ceremonies. I was like, I need to, I need to reach out to Brit. What was the name of her cards? And I kept thinking, I'm like, go on Instagram. You know, we love social media and there you were. And then just everything that dominoed from there. Oh, we live in apartments across the street from each other. No. <laughs> All these synchronicities happen. So then what I loved about that is just like the joke of you want to meet me in the alley? Yeah, girl, let's meet in the alley. <laughs> I know that's our secret text. I'm like, if people, saw, people would think we were doing drug deals in the back because I'm like, well, where do you live? I'm in Frisco. I'm in Frisco too. Oh, you're in the same place. Oh my God. Well, let's just meet at the little park. Okay, great. <laughs> It just really was. I mean, that's what makes it so fun and so easy. And I think we just make it so hard on ourselves. And I know that that's a part of your story as a single mom. How did that contribute to where you are today, empowering and shining so bright? And when I see you and I witness you, I'm just like in awe because I would have never guessed just as so many people say to us, I would have never guessed you guys were miserable, hated life and were overweight. And right, all right. Like, so to see you today, it's like, you all, you kind of have to take us on that backstory of like, how did you get to this bright, shining, beautiful, empowering woman? Thank you. Well, I'm a native Texan. I was born in Houston. Um, and I was actually in Texas until right about, I want to say eight or nine. And then my father has family in Wisconsin. So he moved us there so he could start a business with his brother and, and father. And we were there for quite a few years of my growing up stages and uh, finally moved back in 09 to Texas. And that's really when the journey went full speed. Um, I am blessed to be a part of entrepreneurs, both my mother and father are entrepreneurs. So that grind, that get it done was ingrained in me from birth, right? So my mom's been in the beauty industry since I was in her belly. I know you and I share that similarity too. Yes. And, um, so 
<laughs> the synchronicities just keep popping. Um, but yeah, I I went to my parents had kind of um a rocky relationship throughout my whole growing up. And one of the things that led me to move back to Texas was they actually got divorced. But through that whole life, I saw them go up and down and roller coaster. So I had this envision of what I didn't want in a relationship. But when you haven't done the work, you attract that. And um, as I was thinking of leaving a not good relationship, I was found out I was pregnant with my daughter, Haley, who's now 13. And I had to make a major decision, right? Do I want to go down the same path? That's how I felt at the time. Or do I want to break that generational tie and curse and um, try a different way? And that's what I wanted to do. So seven months pregnant, I moved to Frisco, Texas and moved in with my mother at the time and had Haley here. And from there, my healing journey started because I had to make a lot of difficult decisions. And when you're pregnant, you're emotional. <laughs> and there's just a whole different dynamic of energy that's happening. Uh, what I will tell you is that it's the best decision I ever made. Neither she or I would be the people we are today if I hadn't have made that difficult decision. And with that journey, I have been blessed with so much support and love. Um, so much gratitude for that that again, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have that. Um, geez, <laughs> that one has me blocked for a second because it's kind of amazing how things happen, right? The journey of life and the ups and downs. Um, so from there, I started doing hair. And then in 2018, I got my yoga teacher training cert. And that's when I noticed my intuitive gifts got sparked again. Um, my healing journey and rediscovery deepened even further. Uh, we all have intuitive gifts. We just don't know how to use them. And at a very young age, I had them. And a lot of people think that they're weird or whatever the case may be, because we don't quite understand what it means at the time. So we suppress them. Right. Like that's not normal. We shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> but there's so much that we should talk about. I right? agree. That's like why we're here. And it feels like soul family. When we connected, I'm like, oh my God, the other weirdos are here. Hooray. I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, you, it, it's been really amazing meeting people. And like you said, there's been so many synchronicities. And I, and I find that I've been lucky because I'm with a woman who's woo woo. A lot of guys kind of push that away, but it, it's so cool for me because. I'm so sciencey and logical and let's plan everything out and let's do everything with the system and framework. And Britt's like, let's just throw it in the air. I think it will just flow into it. And it's really cool because it's led us on so many journeys. And so I've got to meet really cool people who there's no way with my little system plan, it would have ever happened. And so I want to ask you a question though. You said something that's really important because for your journey to be where it's at takes a ton of courage and it takes a ton of saying, well, I may not be making the decisions that everybody else may want me to make, but I know what's right for me and I'm going to make them because that's what I know I need to the person who's out there in a space where they need to make a bold decision to someone who needs the courage and the sort of inner strength to actually go, you know what? Enough is enough. Like I'm drawing the line here. And even though it may be easier for me to stay or easier for me to be the same kind of person I am, I know I need to evolve. What would you say to that person? Oh, it's going to take work and you're not going to understand it all in the beginning, but it is a must. And like I had mentioned in 2018, when I had started my journey there, yoga teacher training was just the conduit. And then as the gifts started unfolding and I understood the power that each and every one of us holds that throughout the years of getting told, you know, how you should be or not be, um, those get dissolved and diminished. So to, to then step into your power is really important, but along that journey, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, but if it was easy, then everyone would do it. Right. It's just like working out or eating healthy or something like that. Right. I always compare it to wellness because I am huge on wellness and holistic ways 
right? Um, but you got to take the blinders off and you have to learn how to set boundaries, not only for yourself, but people in your life that are going to probably butt heads with you or tell you that that's absolutely ridiculous, but it's not. It's not ridiculous because just because they don't understand it doesn't mean it's not good for you. And that's when you really have to go within and ask yourself, is what I'm doing getting me advancing in my life or am I stagnant, staying the same? And am I miserable? Am I wearing myself down so much that your face gets paralyzed? And that is something that I, I had to deal with. You know, being a single mom and and having that entrepreneurial mindset, it was go, 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 help everybody. But was I taking care of myself? The answer is no. And that's really where it starts. It starts within. And you have to make that decision that no matter what anybody else says, that you're going to take it one step at a time, one day at a time, and chis chisel away at the unconscious programming that we all have, and it's not just in this, and now I'm gonna get in the woo-woo side, it's not just in this realm, it's generational throughout our bloodlines. And it follows us until one of us says, nope, not this time. And isn't that a powerful place to be where you have the courage to make that choice? That's a lot of the topic that we've been covering inside our Elevated Life Membership Club. The month uh, topic has been on courage. So to have this conversation right now just seems so aligned because we are all at this collective choice where we have to make a courageous decision and say, am I going to keep repeating these patterns or am I going to choose to do something different? And your advice is so true. It's not fucking easy, but it is worth it. And it's not easy to live in a life of quote comfort zone in this self-sabotaging pattern. To me, that's way more hard work than the actual hard work we're talking about is. So it shouldn't scare someone into thinking like, oh, well, I have to do work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> like you're already doing work to live in that hell that you've created for yourself or that you've accepted until you realize you do have the power to make that choice. Gosh, it's, it's you know, it's to realize we have that power, I think is the ultimate, you know, mm -hmm. that at any moment you have a choice and it may not be an easy choice. It may be the most difficult choice you've ever made in your whole life. And the future may look super daunting. Mm -hmm. You may be like, well, if I do this, I know it's going to be hard and it's going to be hard for a while. But the right choice is always the right choice. And I always say, don't wait to hit rock bottom before you make a change. I mean, do you, would you agree with that? Yes. Yes. Because I lived it. <laughs> <laughs> same girl, same. I watched my mom live it. I've watched pretty much everyone I love before me live it only to realize we don't have to wait. We don't have to burn out. We don't have to have our body create Bell's palsy or whatever the doc, the doctors wanted to call it mm -hmm. for you to have a wake up call in your physical body. Every, every wake up call I think involves the physical body because we were in a near death experience on a mountain in Colorado. And that was my wake up call of like, damn girl, you need to, you need to be doing things differently. You cannot keep on in these same footsteps because you're going to end up having a stroke just like your overgiving hairstylist empathic mom which yeah. she's beautiful she just didn't have the right tools to manage her energy to have those boundaries like you talk about so can you like rewind the clock back and take us to the day that you woke up and your face was paralyzed because you showed us those before and after pictures through the journey of what you experienced but when you're going through it of course it invokes fear and will this be like this forever and who am I if I don't have my face and like it, I'm sure you went through the gamut of all types of fears trying to unearth and just release themselves from your whole collective, right? So can you take us back to that day and what you were feeling? I would love to take you back. So September 23rd of last year was a normal day. I woke up, I worked out, I went to yoga. So I got my two workouts in. I'm always like, one is one's to get um, muscle and one is to zen out, right? So I got both of those in and then I went about my day, you know, I was in the salon. I think I had one or two energy sessions that day. Normal day, went to bed. Next morning, I woke up September 24th of last year, started moving around the house, turned on the bathroom light, looked in the mirror and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? And so I'm looking at my face and I'm like, so the whole left side was paralyzed, just so y'all um, know what side. 
um, and it wouldn't move. I couldn't close my eye, none of it. So the first person I call is my best friend, Jamie Antignani, who is a naturopath doctor and a healer. So, you know, you have your tribe, you have your team. And I FaceTimed her and she was like, oh my gosh, Krista, she goes, that's Bell's palsy. It's a form of Bell's palsy. And I was like, all right, cool. So then I, uh, I'm overwhelmed with anxiety at this point because I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? And actually, I would like to invite the listeners and you just to close your eyes for a minute and visualize waking up, thinking that you're just going to start your day like any other day. And you look in the mirror and your face is paralyzed. How does that feel in your body? What thoughts are racing through your head? Yeah. You know, just sit for that, sit with that for a moment. And that kind of brings you to a place with that visualization to understand that things can shift in an instant. Because I'm a single mom, the next thing was, am I going to be able to work? Am I going to be able to bring in money? You know, I've got these responsibilities. I had no idea what was going to happen to me moving forward because I had never had anything like this. So, of course, I start doing my research and I talk to my whole wellness team, which I am grateful because I've been in the wellness and health industry since 2018. Even before that, I want to say, 2010. Yeah, 2010. Um, I just, I really dove into fitness and just getting my life healthier, especially because I was now a mom. And um, I leaned into resources. I even had one of my very good friends as an actual MD. I messaged, you know, I reached out to her. And of course, you know, modern medicine wanted to put me on steroids and this and that. And I was like, I can't do that. Like my body will freak out worse being on the synthetics than the natural route. So after I, you know, got my stuff together, cause I went through the crying and I went through the worry and I went through the, all the things. And I was like, all right, pull it in again, take your power back, pull it in. What do I have to do to get it, get better? Cause I was told it could be anywhere from six to nine months or longer to get my face back fully functioning. And I was like, no not this girl. No. Um, so I went the holistic route. I got, um, I did a whole line of supplements that the medical medium has in one of his protocol books. I ordered everything on Amazon to be here the next day. Uh, my best friend, that's a naturopath gave me a whole bunch of remedies to kind of put in. I have a very good friend. That's an oral therapist that gave me mouth exercises my other friend, Jen, gave me, she's a, she's not an esthetician anymore, but she had that um, microcurrent machine. She flew in from California. She was here for an event and she brought it with her and she let me use it throughout my whole journey. My mother is a saint. She is also a healer. She did oil layering. She just, I had a whole community of people that I, I was able to lean into my rehab therapist, Dr. Bo did facial muscle stripping. It hurt like hell, but I had two pinch points at the top of my jaw by my ear and right behind the base of my skull, which were pressing on nerves. So nice. it was actually neurological. Um, the nervous system was shocked. My nervous system was shocked. Why was my nervous system shocked? Because I go 90 to nothing. I typically am up between four and 4.30 in the morning. I would work out at five and I wouldn't go to bed till 10, 11, sometimes midnight. The body cannot function on that limited amount of sleep, but it's like, but I have to, I have to get my workouts in. When else am I going to do it? I have to make sure I'm healthy. I have to do this. I have to do that. So when the nervous system is in a constant fight or flight, guess what happens? It says, no, sister. <laughs> you're going to stop. And if I would have listened the day before that happened, I was up for my 5am workout. I was on my way to the gym. 
And it was almost like time froze. And you, you don't remember it until you have time to sit because I had to sit and I had to force myself to rest. It was almost like I had a mini stroke and I, I don't believe that I did, but it was like, I was going 75, but I felt like I was going 20. So I just went to my workout. I did, it wasn't my full energy as normal, but a week prior to that, my left eye started twitching. So my body was already giving me signals that I was overworked, overstimulated, and not taking care of myself. Ooh, my heart. You really do bring up such a valid point that we ignore our body signals time and time again. My mom was bleeding vaginally for six months straight and she didn't think that was a problem. She's like, God will heal me. Like, no, mom, God gave you a brain to fucking like, go to do something about it. Sis, yeah. you can't just like sit with the problem and hope that it goes away. You have to like be proactive. And then she had a hysterectomy and on the table had a stroke and clotted because she had been bleeding straight for six oh, months. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, what signs are you constantly pushing on the back burner, ignoring your workout or overworking out or not giving yourself time to rest and get enough sleep? We had Dr. Tamara on here and she said, you need at least eight to nine hours of sleep every night. And I think that's something that goes so overlooked in this hustle, masculine driven, like go, go, go economy. Absolutely. So I think being on the signs of burnout, being on the lookout for signs of burnout as your eye twitching or as your body saying, I need to rest. We say, we use our mind to say, I want, I'm doing this to be healthy, but yet we're ignoring our body's cry for rest, just like you were. Yeah. And it, and it, and it will stop you in your tracks. I can contest to that. And I, I remember laying in bed because I, I forced myself to stay home for three days. And that's a big deal for me. <laughs> that is not, that's hard for me. It was, I, I don't like to use the word hard a lot anymore because if we say it's hard, it'll be hard. And that's the power of verbiage and frequency. Um, we have the ability to design our lives and people just don't understand what that means in most capacities, but what we put out is what we get. So um I remember being in bed and having those emotional, I, I finally let myself cry. And that's a big deal for me. Um, Cause I have to wear so many hats. I, I don't let myself feel a lot. So when that happens, it's a big deal for me, but I had to do it. I had to feel it. I had to understand why did I let myself get to this point? And it's the overachieving, always looking for, you know, the pat on the back. I wasn't truly doing it for me. I was doing it because society said you need to do this, this, and this to be deemed successful. You know, this, what you're tapping into right now, I think is such an important conversation because it's true. Our society worships overachievers. Mm -hmm. I have at this point now built a business of, for people who are overachievers to help them relax yes. because it is such a missing component. And I had no idea. I had no idea doing anything that I did. That I would, and I didn't know until I really met Britt. Britt was one of the first people because she is an overachiever. If you give her a goal, if you tell her to do something, most people wait until they're a hundred percent ready to do something. Britt waits until she's 15% ready. She's ready to take on charge. And, and it's, if you watch entrepreneurs, if you watch successful people, that's what they all do. People who are great at stuff, they do that. And a lot of times they're missing. And I mean, you're already doing yoga. You're already working out. I'm sure you're already like thinking about what you're eating. You're already doing the stuff. Like yes. there's so many, what, what, what people don't realize is that ambition sometimes is really hard to turn off if it is tied to the love that we receive from other people. Yep. So if you are wanting to people, please, if you're only being successful because mom will love me, dad will love me, I might get a partner because I'm successful. People will think that people will think that nothing's wrong with me, you know, things like that. That pull, I mean, when we're told all the time, like all the big reels, all the big things are success driven. Oh, go do it. You got this. You can do yeah. this. You know, a lot yeah. of times you take the time and the courage to develop that attitude only to find out that it's not the real attitude. It's not the one to have. There is a huge art and science to balance. 
Absolutely. I know too, because I've had the shingle so many times. Ooh, yes. I'm one of the youngest people. When, and whenever I've ever told someone I've had the shingles, they're like, oh my gosh, I started having the shingles when I was 22, which is like ridiculous. Stress, all stress related. And it's I did all it. All nervous system like, related. All, all nervous system. All nervous system. It's all, it's all feeling over anxious. Like you need to be doing something like you need to be more perfect. It's that attitude. And it's hard because you have to find that fine line between I'm going to be successful. I'm going to take charge. I'm going to do anything. I, I can get it done. Like I've, you know, when you have that kind of, at the same time, you have to hit that relaxation piece. And that's the piece that so many of us miss. And that, I mean, that's why at this point, I love what I do because without it, I don't know what I, I mean, I'd still be having right. shingles. Because I'd still be right. you would be done. repeating the same cycle over and over again. And that, and what is insanity doing yep. the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. But why do we do that? Because it's ingrained in the unconscious mind. We have to unprogram what we've learned or what's been put in our brain since uh, conception from mom and dad and unravel it and rewire thought patterns. And that takes time. And it's a journey or a hypnotist and it, it, it's, or, it's, yeah, a, or that. <laughs> it, it's amazing too, because a lot of times it's not something that our parents did illfully. Yeah. On purpose. No, they were trying to give us the ability. They were trying to build us up. They're like, I mean, uh, my, my parents were like, you're the smartest person I know. Go get it kid. And it's just like, there, there was so much buildup. They weren't like, it wasn't, they weren't trying to be mean. It wasn't like, well, if you don't succeed, you know, where you got to eat outside and stay in the doghouse. I don't know. Your dad might, might've had that kind of vibe. Yeah, it's a little strict, right? But it, that, that was the way dads were back then. Dads were a little, oh, you know, totally. a little tough love, you know? My dad and would my get up at 5 like, a.m. and then yes. bang on my door. And I'd be like, what time is it? And he's like, eight o'clock. And I would look at the alarm clock and it'd be 5 a.m. And he's like, you're sleeping your life away. And I'm like, Leave me alone. I'm 14. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would have, I definitely would have been in trouble. I would sleep till like 12 in the afternoon, 1 p.m. Like, no, that was, a, I that was, was never a, allowed to. Not mm -hmm. acceptable. Oh, uh, and I feel like that's why I just love to rest. Like, it, because I need it, because I'm always on, I'm always tapped into other people's energy, my own energy, for spirit guides. Like, it's a lot all the time. So, for me, prioritizing rest is very important. But I'm curious because you had a healthy routine, because you were working out, doing yoga, like you were living mostly mindful, <laughs> you know, Most because, of the time. Uh, yeah, because yeah. there's obviously an element of like, Hey, we need to like step back. What now are your practices that help you to live fully mindful so that you don't hit that burnout stage and your body doesn't freak out on you? What are the practices that you've embodied now since then over the last year to help you stay grounded and balanced? Uh, to slow down. <laughs> To slow down. And that's the easiest way to put it because it's no, and that's another thing too. Like somebody said something the other day, I actually posted it. It said, don't get complacent in your daily routine. Entrepreneurs and over overachievers, we have a routine. Like we get up at this time, we do this, 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 we go to sleep, we wake up, we do it again, 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 again. So that repetitive cycle is actually what causes the overtaxing of the nervous system. And I'm, you're going to hear me say nervous system a lot. And I think too, like Britt, because we're both hairdressers um, and in the beauty space and also healers, there's that fine line of, of learning how to shield yourself energetically and physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all of the, all of it matters because people are constantly sitting down and vomiting their problems. Uh, we offer solutions a lot and that's not what they want to hear. Now, since I've made boundaries and reevaluated the frequency I'm putting off, I don't attract those people anymore. What I attract is people that want to do the work. And that's, I'm allowed, I'm uh, open and willing to allow that into my field if they're willing to do the work, mm -hmm. right? So I had to do that for me. So I do have my routine, but there are times where in the morning I'll wake up and I'll tap into my higher self and I'll be like, not today, girl, lay back down till 6 a.m., you know, so that gives me two more hours. And then I'll figure it out. I've changed 
maybe not such vigorous workouts to going for an hour walk. You know, we mm -hmm. live by the stars, so we have a beautiful area that's well lit and safe and we can go walk at night. And that's when also I get a ton of downloads, right? Cause I'm outside in nature and we're able to rebalance and ground and just have that nurturing of nature, which I love to teach people about, especially now with the changing of the seasons, everybody's like, what I've heard the most is I'm so tired. And I'm like, yeah, you know how the plants outside and the weather changes, like that happens for us too. <laughs> Yeah. The sun's like miss you're missing like extra hours of sunlight for energy. <laughs> right. Yeah. So awareness would be the biggest thing, right? Be aware of how you're feeling. And that's another thing society teaches us is, you know, don't be too emotional. Don't feel just do it anyways, even if you don't want to. And it's like, listen, the body speaks to us. The body holds trapped emotions. It, it, it holds all kinds of negative things if we don't learn how to release them yeah. and because if of the realm that we're in all three of us are healers here I do believe that because I was going so hard with my healing business and also my hair business there's also a type of spiritual attack that can happen to us healers because we bring light back to the world it's true. Yeah. And I think that's why having these practices of boundaries of energetic clearing and release of, uh, slowing down and resting to recharge are absolutely vital to our well being and our ability to continue to stay consistent and show up with that pure energy and light because we need it at this time. And we have to learn that lesson of, you know, I'll never forget. I talked to an energy healer last year when our dog was going through a lot of wellness, just a lot. My dad died. There was a lot going on that I thought, yeah. maybe, maybe I should talk to some, maybe I should talk to someone. And I got on the call with her and she said, honey, your, your aura looks like a, a balloon with pinholes in it everywhere. Everyone loves your energy, but you've got to stop using your energy for them. And you yep. need to start channeling divine energy to them and set yours aside. Side. And that's made all the difference. And although I know I have a lot to give and people enjoy my energy, mm -hmm. I think there's something to be said in knowing that that is truly for you. When we talk about self-love and self-care, it's not like Chris is coming to pour into my cup. That's called an energy vampire, you know, yeah, where you go I, we release a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yes where you have to start taking responsibility of where are, where is your energy level at? And I think the practice that you've started to embody and something that I teach at all my retreats, when we wake up first thing in the morning, I ask everyone, ask yourself, what do you need today? Like, what oh, do you brilliant. need? Yeah. So when I wake up every morning, take a deep breath, fucking thank you. I'm here again today. And what do I need right now for me? And just like you, you've either need more sleep or it's time to get up and do some cool shit. Or maybe it's like, write that email that you're inspired with these ideas. Or maybe yes. it's like, you know what? Don't do your like weights and shit. Like just take a walk. I think it's so important that we don't get rigid and maybe not complacent, but rigid in our routine because we need routines to help us stay structured and consistent. But I think it's important to have that feminine flexibility, adaptability, receptivity of, well, what do I need today? Because maybe I'm used to doing CrossFit every day and then fucking yoga and then like, nine, you know, like, but now we're, as we're getting older and we are using more of our energy, I think it's important for us to be even more mindful of being able to change and adapt what we need at this time. Because right now for me, more sleep than more movement, you know, I, that's just where I'm at in the season, but it may, it may change, you know? And I think yeah, having absolutely. that tool to ask yourself every morning, like, what do I need? today, not yesterday, not tomorrow. And then having the courage to honor that. I think that's really where the big asking the question is just step one, having the courage to take action and, and truly pay attention to what you need. When we cut off our feelings, we cut off our intuition because our body is what's communicating what we need. Uh, 1000%. And I love that you brought that up too. And it's a common mi misconception people too. Uh, when you ask somebody, are you healthy? And a lot of them will go, yeah, yeah. But what does that mean? Right. And, and most will say, well, I work out and I eat healthy and yada, yada, yada. They'll, you know, run things, what they deem as healthy, but really whole body health is mind, body, spirit, 
right? So if your mind and your spirit aren't connected and you're not feeling and you're not listening and you're not allowing the intuition to guide you, that physical part only goes so far. That's clearly, uh, I'm an example of that because I, I do work out. I do eat healthy. I do drink my water, like almost a gallon a day. Like I'm doing all the things, but was I really nurturing my body as a whole? And the answer was no. You know, it's one of the most, you have it, it's one of the most important things for, for us as coaches, as healers, as anyone in a service-based industry, as hairdressers, yeah. it's so important to be thinking about you, not only yourself, what you're doing with your kiddos, your partner, your clients too, though, where are they missing that piece? Because it's always going to be something and a lot of them aren't invisible. A lot of health things you can kind of see, you can kind of tell like, Hey, you've been neglecting a little bit. I know you yeah. know it, we yeah. don't, you know, kind of that, that thing. And it's, it's interesting to, you have to listen to their words. You have to be really cognizant of what they're saying to you and why they're phrasing it the way they phrase it. Because the change of a verb, the change of an adjective, the, all those little bitty pieces of the sentences really start to matter. And being able to have that open dialogue and realize that's where a person's at, but then not feel responsible always for saving them. Remember, we can't save people. I don't care who you are. It's not possible. It is not possible. You, If you try too hard, you will both drown. That is that's exactly right. what will happen. But you can always throw them the life preserver. Say, hey, I'm going to throw you a life preserver. I'll will, you if go. you grab onto it, I'm, I'll will you in. Come on, friend. I got this. But they have to grab on. And if they don't grab on, there's nothing you can do about it, no matter how much worrying, how much want to change them. I know a lot of empaths feel like, oh, I'll get in this relationship. You can save everybody. I'm going to change them. And what ends up happening, you just deplete all your energy because it was never going to happen in the first place. You can spin right. all the tools you want, but if the break's on, the break's on. Like It, it won't matter. And it's, it's so important, too, what you mentioned about boundaries. I'm going to take us back real quick on the boundary comment because yes. if someone is wanting new people in their life, the most important thing to remember is you have to set up boundaries with the people that you don't want. And if they're the big energy vampires that we're talking about, they're kind of the narcissist people who are only with you because of something they gain from you. If they're only with you because of that, when you set up the boundaries, they'll, they know that they're wasting their energy now. It's only the boundaries that allow the narcissist to go away. There's okay. nothing else that can happen unless they, they pass away. That's going to be the only other miracle in, in your life. That is, so you have to set up boundaries. You know, you have to have that. And the second that you do, you start and enforce them. You start yeah. inviting the new people in and they come. That's how you break the and cycle. There's a shift. Mm -hmm. Huge. I know, I know y'all too in the energy space and helping people clear those frequencies is like, I explain this to my clients too. I'm like, listen, as you elevate, it's an incongruent energy. So with that incongruency, they're not up here with you. They'll either gracefully fall off or they might fight a little bit. But as long as you keep your boundaries strong, you're shielding up, you're doing all the things. They can't resonate with you at that point. So not only does it make you high, I like to call it high vibing. Um, you're less affected from the negativity. And you're like, oh, yeah, well, thank you because you served a lesson in my life and I've learned it. And send them gratitude and love, right? Because love is the highest frequency than gratitude. Stay in those states, even when it's difficult <laughs> and you might want to cuss somebody out. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Yeah, it reminds me of the time when, you know, shit was going crazy in 2020 and I was empathically feeling so much fear and anxiety that I was like yes. getting stressed out in my body. And so finally I was like, okay, guides, I need help. Because usually I'm like navigating, they're they're helping in the background, like, you know, not sure. trying to be too obvious, but there are times where I'm like, mayday motherfucker, I need help. Yes, and that was one of those times. And yeah. I literally just reached out and was like, okay, guides, I need help. Like how do I maintain love and light in a world filled with anger, fear, and rage? And their answer was like, they're what, they didn't wait, make me wait for like five days and meditate and all the things. It was just hit me back. Like there was like no delay. I'm like, oh damn. Okay. Thanks for the answer. It was very, right. awesome, very clear. It was like, Ooh, okay. Well shit. I can't deny that. 
And the answer was anger breeds anger and love breeds love. And I was like, Amen. man, fuck that. I'm like, I, yeah, I want a better answer. Like, so you mean I just have to love, I just have to keep loving. And they're like, yep. I'm like, come on. Like, I don't, they just need to be punched in the face. Like something I'm like, come on, can't there be something cooler than that? But the truth is, you know, looking back over the last three years, since getting that message, like love is the answer always. My dad wrote a song called love is the key. I feel like we should get that like a little necklace or something something. Aww, but it, yeah. it really just is the answer and the antidote to any anxiety that you're causing in yourself, to any anger that you're experiencing from someone else. I think love and tapping into that is a practice. And that's why living mindfully and becoming aware of how you're feeling and what's going on inside of you mentally, emotionally, all of the things is yeah. so important because that awareness is how you choose love every time because you recognize someone else is suffering. They're projecting onto me. This doesn't have anything to do with me. And that's a life that's been lifetimes of lessons to finally get that one. <laughs> Dude, yes, 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 yes. You know, and that you have to make a decision there. Yeah. Like, are you going to be the chain breaker? Well, the answer is yes. So I yes. feel like you mentioned, you know, elevating and when you raise to that frequency, no one can, no one can fuck with you. I have these third eye sunglasses with like an extra sunshade on it. We call them my hater blockers because I feel like put those on only love can pass through, you know, like no, no hate, no judgment, no fear, no anxiety. So I feel like energetically and symbolically, we all need to put our hater block blockers on and just right. let love shine through. And if you're limiting love within yourself, you're going to limit it with other people. If you're judging yourself, you're going to judge other people. And to shift that, you have to start doing that inner work, which is what we've been talking about here today with you is yes. we can do all the external work and it's pretty on paper, check, check, check but internally are we showing up and asking and, and nurturing ourselves and giving us fully like what it is we need so it makes me think about the question we love to ask all of our guests and that is what does living an elevated life mean to you you've kind of talked about raising your frequency with love but what does living elevated life mean to you mm, that's a beautiful question mm -hmm. allowing yourself to truly be you and a lot of people don't know who they are. And it's taken me 40 years to figure it out. So there's no, there's no time limit. There's no, um, there's no restriction for when you decide to say yes. Yes to setting the boundaries. Yes to leading with love. Yes to, um, we get to choose again, we have the power to design our life. And what does that look like? Ask yourself, what does that look like? Take a minute and sit in that. A lot of the times I have people envision and even I envision what does a perfect day look like for you? Where do you how do how do you feel inside your body when you do x, y, and z? And a little bit energy wise, like I'm a generator. When I, yeah. when I do things that bring me joy, everybody's going to feel it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to radiate off. So through this journey, it's like, if it doesn't feel good, or I feel blocked here, mm -hmm. or there's some physical ailment, because everything emotional shows up in a physical ailment within the body, some type of restriction, learn to say no. Mm -hmm. That would be my key thing. Learn mm -hmm. to say no. Mic drop right there. Elevate living an elevated life means learning to say no. It's powerful. Woo. Yep. I mean, and you know what? Actually, we were having a conversation with some of our members in the Courage Masterclass, and they said I their courage challenge for this month was that they were going to start saying no. And for me, I thought, wow, like I fucking love saying no. It feels liberating. <laughs> it feels good. Like Oh my, it me means I have more me time. Like no is like my best friend. So I have to remind myself of what that felt like before boundaries, 
before Brittany with boundaries. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what that like felt that. like where you were just people pleasing and saying yes to like, I hope that I'll get love from this, or I hope that I'll get approval from it. That's ultimately what it all boils down to. And Absolutely. when you start giving that to yourself, you eliminate all the fucking obstacles that you have to hurdle over to get like maybe a hopeful ounce of like, good job, babe. Like, thanks a lot, but right. not the love that you truly deserve that you could give to yourself. So I feel like it all goes back down to the, when you're pouring love into you, you don't yep. feel the need to people please and say yes to everyone else. You're, you're 1000% correct. Oh, no, everyone say no with the exclamation. Like right. just feels like, so nah, good. That doesn't work for me. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we teach seven or above, you know, is it a seven yeah. or above so that you can tap into your logical mind and your feeling body and make a conscious choice of, is this in alignment with where I truly want to go? Or is this me people pleasing and creating that same pattern? And I think that's been one of the most simple yet powerful tools that has been born on, from the elevated life that I think can help both the air mental type person or the watery feeling type or earth feeling type, you know, like we all operate differently. And I see there's so much blue energy over there, throat chakra expression, which is so beautiful to get to see you show up and shine unapologetically because your story of, you know, overcoming what you've had to experience as a hardworking single mom, all of these, I think are really foundational pillars that so many of us can stand on in our own story and say, wow, I feel that way too. You're not alone. Oh my gosh, I'm overachieving. Oh my gosh, I'm overworking. Oh my gosh, I'm doing those same things. But he hearing your story, Krista, really, I think reminds everyone that we have the power of choice. It makes me think of Dorothy and the sparkly red slippers. Just yes, like, absolutely. A decision. Just make yep. a decision what it is that you want. And the first way to do that is to tune in and ask that very important question that you brought up. Who am I? When you can start to answer those questions, then you start to find clarity of where your integrity is so that you can build boundaries around them and then know what the consequences are and have the courage to enforce them when those narcissists try Try to fucking energy vampire your ass. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> just, I'm just saying on a Wednesday. No, I know. We just, you know, we just got to throw it out there. But you're it's true, correct. Yeah, it's true. And if you're listening to this message, you identify because we know yep. that your vibe attracts your tribe. So I know that you've yep. been through this. I know that you're like homie preach, because that's exactly what I've been feeling. That's like who I was raised by. That's who I've attracted and yes. partnered with. And I mean, it's just, it's the same cycle that we're now finally having these conversations of saying, yes, we were all a part of that. Now we're waking up to it and saying, I'm going to make a decision. So I just want to thank you and honor you for having the courage to commit to living your life with purpose and intention. And most importantly, love, because that's how we're going to heal this fucking place. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yes. And I thank you so much gratitude for both of you um, mm -hmm. and just source and the divine for allowing our paths to cross when it did. And there's no coincidences ever. There's always reasons people get brought into our lives. I so. truly agree. And I'm beyond blessed and grateful to have magically multiple times crossed your paths to finally get to say and call you a friend over time. And I think that's, what's so beautiful about when you live an elevated conscious life is you start to become flow. You, you become, I don't know, you start, like Chris said, he had a structure, but now he's on this flowy path with me because it does open you to meet the right people at the right time. And so I'm just beyond grateful and blessed that all of us were open and magnetic and just be in our generator self to attract with joy and light. Absolutely. So I would love for our elevators to take a look at the magic and the work that you're doing in the world. So where can they find you? How can they work with you? Share more so that our people who are like, oh my God, love her can connect with you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So on Facebook and Instagram, it's just Krista Wagberg, which is my first and last name. Um, on there, on um, there is my website, which is just kristawagberg.com. And I'd also like to extend a complimentary 20 minute discovery call just to kind of go through and see and hear your story. And if there's any way that I can help support you on your journey in any way, shape or form. So Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure getting to shine a light on the magic that you're doing in the world. And honestly, the hard vulnerable truth of the hustle culture and what, you know, ha even having the practices of 
total health and physical workout isn't enough to support that mind, body, spirit, holistic well-being. So it's been a beautiful journey of witnessing you step into your full power and reclaim it after experiencing some hard stuff. And we are so proud of you for living that elevated life. And we cannot wait to see what's next from you because I feel like, I just feel like this is that moment. Like this is the platform. This is like, I'm sharing my story with the world and now you're unstoppable. There, like nothing's going to stop. There we stop. go. Unstoppable oh, is a beautiful, I love the, <laughs> the song Unstoppable. But also, you know, what the beautiful part about us being in frequency and in tune and how our paths cross and align is the biggest part about growth and that people need to understand is that it it you have to have collaboration and community. You have to, yeah. that's how things grow, right? You have to nurture, connect. So all those frequencies are coming together. And I know that you're like, to, you're a visionary. Um, I am too, both of you are, right? So there's a bigger picture here and I'm excited. I'm excited to work with y'all at one point for sure. Yeah, I feel like, all generators, all air signs, all visionary. Like it's, we're just everybody watch out world. <laughs> yep. watch it's the yin and the world. yang. I always say that it's the yin and the yang. Like we have to have both. You do. It's true. And she is so right about that. And exactly why we created this community and this podcast here on the Elevated Life to bring like-minded conscious CEOs together so that we could have these elevated conversations to know that you're not alone in the world. And we're so freaking proud of you for the courage that uh, it takes to shine your light in this dark world. And until then, we will catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>